Let's say your name is Timmy. You live in a highly industrialized world. You own a large, beautiful house with everything you need. Every day, you take your car and drive to the factory you work at. Unfortunately, though, you don't own a garden, as the weather conditions in your climate are not the most favorable for this. The sky is always grey. You barely ever saw the sunshine, and the rain is acid. You're not the happiest about the current state of the world, but nobody seems to do much about that. Now let's change things a bit. You're Tina, and you live in a completely different world, other than Timmy. You also own a big house, but yours generates its own power with the help of solar panels and wind turbines, which you have installed. You take your bike to work, and in your free time you enjoy gardening. You also love doing that for the delicious meals you can later prepare. You are generally happy and healthy, and there's nothing stopping you from enjoying life. To put it simply, sustainability can be seen as three pillars holding a heavy roof which carries the burden of humanity. The first pillar is the social one, and it has its focus on the way people get along with one another. In order to understand this, let us have a look at the schools which Timmy and Tina's children go to. In the sustainable utopias, Tina's child receives a good education and is surrounded by friendly people, where everyone is seen as equal. On the other hand, in the dystopia, Timmy's child isn't too keen on learning, his education not being as important. The people around him are rude and selfish, racism and sexism being present at every corner. The second pillar is the environmental one, and it focuses on the well-being of the planet. As you have already seen in the beginning, Tino lives in a very environmentally friendly world. In this utopia, the use of fossil fuels has stopped everything being sustainable. Her house is fitted with solar panels and a wind turbine for power. She has an electric car and there are plenty of trees everywhere. Meanwhile, Timmy isn't doing so great. The only source of energy for him is his nearby power plant, which uses fossil fuels. Timmy does also have a car which he drives everywhere, but it runs on diesel. With a noticeable lack of forests, CO2 is abundant and acid rains start to take place. The third pillar is the economic one, and it focuses for short on the distribution of money. In Tina's world, money is seen as a very important resource, and cheaper alternatives are always the ones to be picked. On the other hand, in Timmy's world, money is spent poorly, people considering big expensive buildings to be worth it. All in all, it can be noticed that the three pillars are present in Tina's world, and therefore sustainability being kept up, while in Timmy's world, it is lacking, the roof being on the ground. So what is there to learn from all of this? What if I told you that these two characters are both born in the year 2100, and that these are the two possible ways our world could go. Would you rather leave your grandchildren live in Timmy's world or in Tina's? This is why we need to fight for a better future.